Good morning. Um, today is Tuesday, November the 22nd, and it is approximately 9.34 a.m. I'm going to start off with uh, um, Psalm 6, Prayer for God's Mercy. Um, it was written to the chief musician by David. A Psalm of David. Verse uh, 5 verses are orange for your faith. Um, o Lord, rebuck me not in thy anger, neither chastise me in thy hot displeasure. To have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. 3. My soul is also sore vexed, but thou, O Lord, how long? For return, O Lord, deliver my soul, O save me, for thy mercy's sake. 5. For in death there is no remembrance of thee in the grave. Who shall give thee thanks? 6 and 7 is green for love. I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. 7. My eye is consumed because of grief. It waxes O of because of all my enemies. Okay, this person is having some internal suffering. 8, 9, and 10. Back to orange for your faith. Depart from me, all ye workers of inequity. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. 9. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. 10. Uh, let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly okay we're gonna go back to what we were trying to read which was um king second kings 23 uh on the topic of provo provocation which means to agitate one's soul um we didn't finish it i think we got cut off at verse seven or eight so i'm going to start off with seven and uh it is brown, and uh, it says, and he broke down the house of, uh, actually, let me tell you, Second Kings 23 has uh, to do with Joshua, directs the people to obey God. Joshua is slain in battle. Jehoah has ranges in Judah, and Jehoiakim ranges in Judah also. Okay, now we'll go to seven. And he broke down the houses of the Sodomites, which are male prostitutes or homosexuals, uh, that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hanging for the grove. Ten, nine, I'm sorry, eight. And he brought all the priests uh, out of the city of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests have burned incense from Geba to Bathsheba and broke down the high places of the gate that were in the entering <clears throat> end of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which was on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nine. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem. They didn't come. The false ones did not come. Uh, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. Ten. And he defiled Toba, which is in the valley of the children of Heman, that no man might know, might make his son or daughter to pass through the fire to Malak. Malak was a, a false god that the people worshipped, and part of their ceremony, of course, was to cast their children into the fire to their God. Very horrific ending for the kids. Um, 11. And he took away the horses that the king of Judah had given to the sun. Um, they worshiped the sun. Uh, at the entrance in the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. 12. And the altars that were at the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the king of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the 
house of the Lord, did he, did the king beat down and break them down from hench and cast the dust of them into the brook Kindrum? 13. Still brown. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zodonites, and for Chemos, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Melchon, the abominations of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. So these were all different gods, uh, but uh, they considered to be an abomination unto the true God of Israel. Okay, 14. And he broke in pieces the images and cut down the grooves and filled them, filled their places with the bones of men. 15. More over the altar that was at uh, Bethel and the high places which Jeroboam, the son of Nabeth, who made Israel to sin had made both that altar in the high places he break down and burnt the high places and stomped it small to powder and burnt the groove. This was all part of what uh, you will be considered cleaning up. Okay, cleaning up. Uh, verse 16 is go for prophecy. And as Joshua turned himself, he spied the supers that were in the mouth and sent and took the bones out of the supers and burnt them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words so that we are reading. Verse 17 and 18 is pink for witnessing. Then he said, what title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the soaps of the man of God, which came from Judah, and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of, Beth of Bethel. 18. And he said, Let him alone, let no man move his bones. Uh, so they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophets that came out of Samaria. Okay, so he was his bones were not the only bones that were uh, within that space. Nineteen and twenty is brown for Satan again, and all the house, uh, and all the houses also of the high places that were in the city of Samaria, which the king of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger. Here's that word again: provocation. Okay, to agitate one's soul. That's what provocation means. Okay, and we can see whose soul is being agitated in this biblical story, um, which the king of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger. Joshua took away and did to them according to all the acts which he had done in Bethel. 20, and he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altar and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. Okay. 21, 22, and 23 is Allah for commandments. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. As it is written. Now, those words are often spoken by our Lord, uh, especially when he was taken up to be tempted by the devil. Oftentimes, the Lord will say, as it is written. And uh, this is a commandment. So you will hear those two words together, uh, three words together. Um, it is written in the book of, of this covenant. 22. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the day of the judges that judge Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the uh, kings of Judah, so they had not held this Passover for some time. I'll read it again. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that judge Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel, nor in the days of, of Judah. Okay, so they have forsaken celebrating the Passover, and we celebrate the Passover now, those people that belong to God. 23, but in the 18th year of King Joshua, where in this Passover was holding to the Lord in Jerusalem. Okay, he had ranged 18 years when they began to pick up 
uh, celebrating the Passover again. 24 is brow. Moreover, the workers with sim familiar, familiar spirits and the wizards, which will be the palm readers today, um, basically the palm readers, witchcraft, um, those are uh, those with familiar spirits, all right? Moreover, with workers, some people, some spirits work with stones also, tossing the stones on the ground and reading them. Those are also individuals with familiar spirits, and you ought to stay away from them, okay? Uh, moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Joshua put away that he might perform the words of the law which was written in the book that Halkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And this book also our Lord read from. Uh, when he walked on earth. He also was given this book by a minister, and he read the words from, the, from this particular book. Okay. 25 is read for discipleship. What is discipleship? I often call off these colors to you guys, and you really don't understand what the colors are. But as we go along in our studies, I will begin to inform you what is all included in discipleship and there are two words mainly obedience and praise all right those are the two main words including service worship wisdom works commitment fellowship followers spiritual gifts and fruit all of that is included under the topic of discipleship Okay, so we have a little bit of that on, in verse 25, and it says, And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him, and this is true. Okay, I'm going to read that again because this man did a lot of cleaning up. It's almost like a, um, cleaning up after the king Manassas who caused the people to sin against God by the practices, practices that they um, committed. And these practices were often considered an abomination unto the God we serve. So this king had to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of breaking down, a lot of destroying, a lot of, um, um, of, um, restoration back to the Lord in order to get his kingdom, his household uh, under control in order, as it, it said, get your house in order. So in order to get his kingdom in order, these are the steps that he had to take. He had to take out down the grooves. He had to take down the idols. He had to get rid of the sodomites. He had to, he had to break things down to powder and cast them here and cast them there. He he had to get rid of the false priests. All of this, it was part of the cleaning up process that the king took in order to get the people back to God. And it says this in 25. And he did it not just halfway. He did it wooly. Wooly. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Wooly with zest. Okay, and it says that, and like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the king, uh, all the laws of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. Twenty um, six is black, notwithstanding the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, uh, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah because of all the provocations that Manassas had provoked uh, him with, uh, wherewith, uh, with all. Uh, I'll read that again. 26 of uh, Second Kings 23 says, None withstanding the Lord turned not, from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his 
anger was kindled against Judah because of all the provocation that Manasseh had provoked him withal. Okay, and 27 says, which is go, and the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as I have removed Israel and will cast off this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen and the house of um, which I said my name shall be there. Um, verse 28 to 3rd. Uh, 28 to 31 is silver for history. Now the rest of the acts of Joshua and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Uh, 29, in his days, Pharaoh, Nicoch, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Azaria to the rivers of Euphrates, and the king Joshua went uh, against him, and they slew him at uh, Melgo, Melgido, where he had seen him at 30, and his servants carried him in uh, a chariot there from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem, buried him in his own sepulchre. And the people of the land took jo Joachim, the son of Joshua, and anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. So he was fighting with the uh, Pharaoh Nicol, king of Egypt, at the time that he passed, uh, that he was killed. And Joachim was twenty and three years old, twenty thirty-one. And Joachim was twenty and three years old when he began to reign. And he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamuto, Hamuto, the daughter of Jeremiah of Lib Libna. Thirty-two is black, and uh, sadly, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. So just because you follow the Lord doesn't mean that your children will follow behind you. They may get lost. They may wander off. They may just stop uh, believing in God and, and stop praising him and thanking him and, and, and pretending not to know him. And so that's called strain. So uh, they may become totally evil and do the most evil things in the world, hideous crimes and all. It happens today. Um, parents are being killed by their children, not just their teenage children, their adult children, their grandchildren, their nieces and nephews. Uh, um, we have seen many, many sad stories of families uh, coming against each other like that, doing most evil things. Uh, as I was growing up, my neighbor, uh, two brothers next to me, I think I must have been 15 years old, two brothers killed each other over a hot dog. Instead of taking a hot dog and splitting it in half and sharing the hot dog, one wanted, they each wanted the hot dog for themselves to the point of death, and they killed themselves. They were in their teens, just like myself. So you can imagine what someone would take your life for today. Uh, people will take your life for almost nothing today. Nothing. Okay? Uh, so don't trust everybody, Lord God. This is not a, uh, this is not a kind and caring world anymore. Uh, our kindness and our caringness often comes about with mass destruction of some kind of natural disaster brings about the good in us. But it, the good in us should be in us every day, not just when trouble comes or calamity comes our way. It should be something that we do every day, do something good for someone besides yourself. Um, 33, and Pharaoh Nick, Nicko put him in bands at Raha, Rala in the land of Hamid that he might not range in Jerusalem and put the land to a tribute of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the Pharaoh Necho made Echelim, the son of Joshua's king, in the room of Joshua, his father, and turned his name to Jehoiakim. So he changed his name. His name was Eliakim, and he changed it to Jehoiakim and took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. Uh, <clears throat> so he didn't range long. Uh, he was evil. Uh, let's see what Jehoiakim is like. 35, and Jehoiakim gave the 
silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandments of the Pharaoh. He seemed to be catering to the Pharaoh. He excited uh, the silver and and the goal of the people to, of the land of everyone according to his taxation to give it to the Pharaoh Nicol. Um, Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he reigned, when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Zabuda, um, the daughter of Padias Aruma. And he did that which was what? Evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father had done. So uh, an evil king or evil leader can bring about much destruction upon the people. Um, there are times when we are going to pay for the things that we do individually, definitely. But we also pay for the things that we do as a nation, the things that we allow our nation of people to to practice and and that wrath can often be more severe uh, than individual wrath. It's a wrath that all of us will will suffer from. It's a terrible thing to have the wrath of God come upon us. So I I I encourage you to uh, take a little bit of time out of your busy day to praise God and thank Him for the, all that you have. Thank Him for your family. And don't just pray for your family, but pray for those that uh, you don't know. Pray for those that are in jail, those that are sick. Pray for the leaders of your country. Pray for your for your, for your your leaders of your church. Uh, pray for the sick, the dying, the poor, the hungry. Um and just pick up the Bible and feed yourself spiritually so that when trouble comes your way, you will be able to be strong enough to handle that which has come upon you. Uh, thank you for joining me here again. My name is Brenda Guerrero at Spiritual Waters. Uh, as always, I, I pray that the peace of God be upon you, the protection of God surround you, and the will of God come from you. Until the next time, have a wonderful day.